Hello everybody, welcome back to another server tutorial video. In today's video we're going to be covering how to make a 2.8.2 RL craft server. So you're going to need a few things. First, you're going to need to create a folder just by right clicking and hitting new folder and then naming it 2.8.2 server or whatever version you prefer. Next, we're going to have to go to this website right here. The links will be down in the description. And it's going to be cursedforce.com slash minecraft slash modpack slash rlcraft slash files. You won't have to worry about getting there. I'll have it in the description, so please just go click the first link. And then when you get there, you're going to want to scroll down to where it says rlcraft server pack 1.12.2 beta 2.8.2.zip. And just go ahead and hit this download button. And when you have that button, it'll show up as something like this and make sure you have WinRAR installed or something to extract zip files. Um, you can look up the tutorial on how to download WinRAR in order to open this file. And so what you are going to want to do is just take all the items in here and drag and drop it into the 2.8.2 server folder. Like such. Perfect. And then you can go ahead and exit out of this and then the next thing you have to go to is head to the Minecraft Forge um, official website and go to 1.12.2 and that should be over here versions 1.12.2 and there's a button that says hide all versions or show all versions and so you just want to hit that button and then scroll down to where it says 0.2838 and hit install the windows if you're on a windows pc and i believe you hit install it if you're on a, a mac or a non-windows pc so after you have that you're going to have this right here you're going to want to double click it and it'll run and you just want to hit install server and then you want to change the target directory in order to do this you just click go to desktop and find 2.8.2 server and click on open and hit ok now it'll extract all the libraries that you need in order to run the server successfully and while you're doing that you can go into this 2.8.2 server and go ahead and read these files and see if there's anything you need to do and all these are important so I will be going over uh, these specifically and what they do and what they change so once you're done with this it'll say successfully downloaded Minecraft server downloaded 20 libraries and installed Forge let's go ahead and click OK and you'll see this right here this Forge-1.12.2 etc etc universal.jar if you do not see this, please click on view and click file name extensions and click this. This will allow you to see the .jar or the .tags or the .exe on the end of every single thing and you're going to need this in order to run your server. So rename this to minecraft underscore server .jar just like so and keep it like that. Now you have to create a text document in order to run the server. So create new and just double click into it and then you're going to want to go to this link that I have in the description and copy this code and paste it in. So this is echoing off this command java xms 124 megabytes uh, and then a max of 2048 megabytes dash jar what it's running off of file path to that jar and then no GUI just saying you won't get the default vanilla uh, GUI and then pausing it if something goes wrong. So for a typical RL craft server, I typically recommend anywhere from four gigabytes to six gigabytes. I have 16 gigabytes in my computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do four gigabytes for this tutorial. And then save as all files run.bat as the run command for the server. And go ahead and click out of this. Once you're done here, you can find your run.bat command and you can double click on it and also delete this text document and it should generate all of your files and it will ask you to not allow eula.txt or to change eula.txt to true which we'll get to see fail to load eula.txt if this does not work and it gives you an error that says cannot initiate heap size you have to download java 64 bit in order to do this go to the Java page so search up downloads Java 64 bit and click Java downloads for all operating systems when you get here you're gonna to want to click on Windows offline 64 bit 
and download and run this. And then once that's done, you should be able to run your server again and everything should load up and that should take care of that issue. So now once you have this set up, you'll have something here called eula.txt. Once you have this, just go ahead and click into it and change this to true. And save and exit. And then once you're done with that, go ahead and run your server again and let it fully load. And then after that, I'll get on to the next part of the tutorial. Okay, so now my server is running. And now that it's running, I'm able to do a couple of different things. So right here, you see it says server.properties. You're going to want to click into this and open this into a new window. And I can make this a little bit smaller because I also have to open this for server only, set these in the server properties when it generates. So when you do this, you get to change some of these settings. So for level name, you can keep this the same and only change these values. So you see allow flight, you want to change that to true so you can ride dragons, etc. And for difficulty, you set it to three to set it to hard. For max tick time, you set it to negative one so your server never times out. And view distance is six. So not as many people, or the, the, the world generation around you is not as far so it lags less. And I would also put your max players down from anywhere to 10 to 12 for a server that's running off of a computer. And then for a Minecraft server, I'm just going to name mine Cyvex's tutorial as such. And you can keep your IP and server port the same. Uh, this is the default value. This is what your Minecraft server will run off of. I actually personally have to change mine because I already have some servers running. So I'm just going to change this to a different value, uh, 25573 and then I can hit file and save and now I can stop my server and restart my server while I open up RLCraft okay so now that RLCraft is running and also my server is running I'm able to go into my command prompt by going to the search bar and typing in command prompt or CMD and typing in ipconfig now that I have the ipconfig I can take this information, this IPv4 address right here, and go and add a new server and make it 10.0.0.93 and then add on my port. If you kept the port the same as what you usually have it as, or as 25565, you, do, you can ignore that step. Once I do that, you'll see that it's 0 out of 12 and the name is Cyvix Tutorial. That's from an old tutorial for 2.8.1. So now you can join server and just wait for it to log in and everything should be fine and you'll see in the config if I exit out of that that it's loading all my files and here I am in the game and it's a little bit loud so you might be wondering to yourself how do I get my friends to join and I actually have another video that I'll link in the description over how to have friends join your world through port forwarding it's a little bit complex and it works different for everyone but I do have a video that covers everything you need, so I'll link that below for you. To go a little bit further into things that you can do with your server, you can add in something called SpongeForge. SpongeForge is essentially a bucket for your uh, Minecraft modded experience. In order to do this, you have to go to the forums.spongepower.org, SpongePower JavaDocs download, which will be a link in the description. And all you have to do is just click on this first link and download SpongeWords 1.12.2 and make sure it's for 2838. Now all you have to do with this is go to mods and drag this in. And you can also find or plugins that you can use. So just go to plugins and or. And let's say I want the essentials plugin, which is nucleus. And all I have to do is find out where to download it at. And then once I download it, I can go ahead and add it into my game. So here's the first one we want right here, 7.2 beta, which is what we have for the SpongeForge. And you can just hit download. And download at my own risk, and it should be right here. Now you have to make sure that it's for SpongeForge 7.2, and it matches the version in here, and all you have to do is drag and drop this in. And once you do that, you can stop your server, And then simply go back to the folder and open it again. 
and it should load all your files and I'll go ahead and get back into RLCraft again. So now that it's running again, you can see that it attempted and ran Nucleus right here. What you can do with this is log into your tutorial server and just run the command once it loads in obviously and do your server console op and then your name in my case cyvex and it'll do opt cyvex from here you can run commands that'll make your life simpler like gm1 and if you do help it should run all the commands that you can do and eventually you should be able to find the commands that you can do with the mod nucleus which is essentially just an essential plugin so you can say perhaps broadcast hello and it'll broadcast hello to the server and that's a nucleus uh, part of their plugin is that you can use broadcast and anyway that's how you set up a rlcraft 2.8.2 server and then the port forward will be in the description for those who want to uh, port forward to their friends and allow them to join and along with that you've also learned how to set up spongeforge and have plugins on your server that allow you to do more unique things i'll have all the links down in the description in order of how i did them in the video and i hope you did enjoy and i hope you guys have a great day if you have any questions please join my discord below and i'll be happy to answer your questions anyway have a great day peace